What's going on, everybody? It is Clint with the undefeated post weigh-in show. That's right, we are doing it low budget again here for you this weekend. We are talking UFC Vegas 28. I just got through watching all the weigh-ins and the face-offs. We're taking one final look at all these fighters before they step into the octagon. We're seeing if we can get any information. Did they have a bad weight cut? Did they look great on the scales? See if we can get one more last little nugget to place a solid bet for you here on Saturday. So let's go ahead and get through my list. Yes, I took my list on my daughter's piece of paper. You can see some of her wonderful, beautiful art there. And it is uh, frozen, Yeah, in case you were wondering. So let's dig straight on into this bad boy. Uh, Claudio Pellas taking on Jordan Leavitt for the first fight of the night. Puelas came in at 155, Leavitt came in at 156, and uh, honestly, Puelas looked absolutely dialed in. Like, I like what I see from this kid. No issues making weight. He looked intense. He looked ready to go. He looks like he's got something to prove. Leavitt came in, no issues. He was having fun, as always, making goofy faces and stuff on the scales, and uh, when they faced off, Claudio's got a decent size advantage. I thought these guys were going to size up well. I thought that Leavitt was going to be, you know, toe-to-toe with this kid, eye-to-eye with him, but it turns out Puelas has actually got a decent little size advantage. Now, I was kind of saying favor to pass in this spot. I don't know enough about Puelas. I don't feel strongly enough about him to place a bet on him. So I'm going to side with the Monkey King. He's a work in progress. I'm expecting improvements, but dang, this is going to be a close fight. I can't lie that the value is probably on Claudio Puelas, and uh, it's going to play out tight on fight night because they have a very similar skill set. Next up, we've got Woodson taking on Zalal. Woodson came in at 145, and he had absolutely no issues. This guy is tall for the division, big, long, very skinny, though. He uh, does his thing, though. He always seems to make weight, no issues. Zalal came in at 146, and he's in great shape as ever. Big smile. I love the energy that this guy brings to the cage both guys were talking when they faced off it looks like you've got a solid amount of confidence on both sides of this fight and really whoever's able to implement their game plan it's going to look like a minus 300 favorite this one should be a good one Woodson's a decent sized favorite I know a lot of people are taking the value stab on Yusef Zalal on the flip side but personally I'm again I'm kind of favored to pass on this one I think Zalal's going to have a hard time getting the takedowns I think he's going to have a hard time closing the distance but Woodson better fight for his life to stay on the feet because if he does get taken down He's absolutely going to be at a massive disadvantage. Now, man on Fjord got a short notice opponent here. Ricci comes in. Uh, Fjord came in at 125 and a half. Ricci came in at 124 and a half. And both women actually looked like they were pretty wiped out. Man on Fjord did not look fantastic on the scales. Not something I'm super excited to see. But she is big for the weight class. She rehydrated immediately. I think she's going to be okay. Ricci looked like she was in solid shape. It's the first time I've seen her, though, so I don't have a whole lot to go off of there. And when they faced off, man on is huge. Man on Fjord is massive compared to Ricci. She's got a big size advantage. She looks like she's a full weight class different. She's a minus 550 favorite for a reason. I'm definitely sticking with Fjord on this one. I'm probably going to look for an inside the distance or a knockout prop. And heck, if you have another favorite that you like on the card, even though minus 550 is pricey, I think Fjord is absolutely worth a parlay shot here on Saturday. Now, uh, we've got Jones coming in here against Alain Patrick. Patrick came in at 154 and a half, and he did a cartwheel on his way to the freaking scale. He must be feeling himself today he looked absolutely shredded in good shape he always comes in good condition we know that now mason jones came in at 156 he looked relaxed and he was in excellent shape as well he actually was so relaxed he stepped off the scales and started to walk away without having done his flex for his uh post weigh-in photo op or anything like that and they had to call him back up there now when they faced off this is something that got me a little bit patrick is a decent bit bigger than mason jones again i thought they were going to be very uh similar in their sizes but Patrick has got a decent size advantage, and that's a little concerning considering he's got such a strong grappling game, and he's going to look to blanket Jones for the full fight. Now, I think Jones is definitely going to use that against him. I think Jones's gas tank is going to be the big, big win here. So I still like my spot on Mason Jones, but I do have a little bit of hesitation. I've got a big three-unit even money parlay with Mason Jones in there, and I'm not going to lie, the size advantage for Patrick has me sweating that a little bit. I'm not hedging. I'm not pulling out. I'm going for it. I'm going to be confident in my read I think Mason Jones ends up getting around three TKO but uh, this is definitely going to be hairier than I expected it to be 
Uh, Maquan Americani taking on the UFC newcomer Kirk. Maquan came in at 146 and he looked well muscled. He's been talking about Olympic lifting, changing up his strength and conditioning regimen. So that absolutely looks like it's paying off. He gave a good solid flex and his opponent Kirk came in at 146 and he looked fantastic. I told you all about fight ready. This kid comes out of fight ready and he looks physically incredible. He's ready to make his UFC debut and honestly I've got high hopes for this kid. It was an intense face off. Both guys looking to kind of punk the other one and and uh, really, they sized up extremely well. So, Makwan Americani is kind of facing a new mirror of himself here. And I, I'm kind of in a dog or pass type of mode here. I don't think I'm going to have a bet on this fight whatsoever. And even though makwan has got the higher level of competition, I think that Kirk poses some problems for him. And unless Makwan can really impose himself in the grappling department, which I'm not sure he can with this kid coming out of fight ready, um, this is going to be an interesting fight. And Kirk may have the advantage on the feet. So, maybe some value on the dog there. Next up, we've got Trinaldo taking Saliakov. Trinaldo moving up to 170 for the first time in his career. Came in at 169 and a half, and he is an absolute unit, folks. I cannot believe how this guy looks at 170. I mean, he was always big and well-muscled at 155, but at 170, damn. So he comes in. He looks fantastic. Gives He's just a solid brick shit house full of muscle. Saliakov comes in at 171. He gave a good flex. He looked he was solid as well. And they sized up extremely well. When these guys got to each other on the faceoff, Trinaldo doesn't look out of, sh- out of size here. He does not look like he's out of his own in the weight class. They sized up extremely well. And anybody taking that dog shot on Trinaldo, I got to say, I After seeing these guys face off, I can endorse it because we know Solyakov is low volume. We know he relies on the big power and the spinning attacks and being flashy. Trinaldo not having a size disadvantage, if he's able to do anything in the grappling department, if he's able to do anything in the volume department, he's absolutely in this fight. So I don't hate that dog shot whatsoever. Good luck if you are taking it. That's going to be a hell of a fight. Tanner Bozer taking on Ilya Latifi. Bozer came in at 242, which is interesting because it seems like he's putting on mass. He's always been a smaller, lighter heavyweight, a guy that moves around really well and a guy that relies on his speed, but he came in 10 pounds heavier than we've seen him before. Carried all that weight extremely well. Does not look like he put it on badly. Does not look like he's carrying a bunch of flab extra on him. He looked good at 242. Latifi came in at 240, and this dude's a tank. He is short. He is broad. He is thick. Honestly, he looked really good. I like to to knock Latifi. I'm not a huge fan of the guy, but I got to give props where it's due. He looks solid today. They uh, they sized up well, except that Bozer has a much bigger height advantage than I expected. I mean, obviously, you've got tall and slim versus short and squat, so you know Latifi's going to be the shorter guy, but he's broad as hell and just yoked. So Bozer, being as big as he was, honestly, was a bit of a surprise for me. I didn't think he was going to be quite that big. It was a respectful face-off, but again, that's going to be a very interesting fight that probably comes down to the third round. So I know a lot of people taking the dog shot on Latifi. I can't say I hate it, but again, I'm in a favorite or pass type of mode here. Please don't parlay Bozer or anything like that. I think the extra weight should help him, but we haven't seen him on his back in so long. I can't trust the guy at a big favorite line. Montana De La Rosa taking on Ariane Lipsky. De La Rosa came in at 126. Lipsky came in at 124 and a half. De La Rosa did need the box of shame. We've seen that before. She has a hard time getting down to 125. She is a big girl, and she's been, uh, you know, filling out at that weight class. Honestly, she looked fine. She didn't look drained. She didn't look sucked out. She didn't look like she had a hard time. It was just a close weight cut. She made 126 after stripping down. She's good to go. Lipsky was cold and confident. Let me tell you, she looks strong. She's she's been working on her strength and conditioning as well. And I'm not sure if she was just being ice cold and stoic up on the scale or if she had maybe a bit of a rough weight cut because you could see her cheeks were sucked out a decent bit and she was really focused on not moving. But she did look like she was carrying that usual confidence that she has in herself. When they faced off, all I could zone in on was the crazy eyes of Ariane Lipsky. She was staring down Montana De La Rosa. Her eyes were popping out of her skull. She is ready to go. She's ready to hurt somebody. And again, that scares me just a little bit because Montana De La Rosa closes out my parlay. So I'm a little freaked out. I think Montana De La Rosa's wrestling is still going to be the edge. They sized up extremely well. These women are toe-to-toe, eye-to-eye. It's going to be excellent. Striker versus grappler. Let's see who can impose their will. And I'm firmly in the Montana De La Rosa corner here. Tom Breeze taking on Antonio Ahoyo. Both men came in at 186, and Breeze was in good, solid shape. He's got abs for days at this point. He looks like he's ready to go. Gave a good flex. Antonio Ahoyo came in at 186, and this dude is a brick shit 
house. He gave a huge flex. He looked stoic and absolutely silent, deadly on the scales. And he did the arm raise. He did the victory arm raise, which was interesting to me. He talked in an interview about how he knows his back is against the wall. He can't take a three-fight losing streak. He's seen people lose their contracts under that circumstance before, even though he's got more fights on the record. So his back is against the wall here in this fight. And I've been tempted to go ahead and take that shot on Ahoyo because I feel like we're getting a massive plus number and Breeze is just a guy that you can't trust. Ahoyo is also a guy that you can't trust though, and that's kind of my issue. When they faced off, Breeze is bigger. I talk on the regular about how big for 185 Ahoyo is, and Tom Breeze has a significant size and height advantage on Antonio Ahoyo, and that is concerning to me. I was getting ready to load up and maybe take that dog shot on Ahoyo, and now I'm going to have to sit here and think about it a little bit more because that size advantage absolutely could make a difference. Now, it makes me feel better from a grappling standpoint. Breeze is going to have a whole lot more work to do to get under the hips of a guy like Ahoyo, so the wrestling I don't think is quite going to be there, but I was expecting Antonio Ahoyo to be much better in the range department, have the kicking advantage with those long legs and maybe a height advantage, so Breeze's boxing wasn't going to be quite so dangerous but with Breeze having the height advantage he's going to be able to close that range a little bit better he's going to be able to use that boxing a little bit more fluidly and that's concerning for when these guys go to war I do think Ohio can make Breeze quit we've seen that before so he can absolutely do that but this could be like a 15 minute sparring match where neither guy wants to push it too super hard and if that's the case who the hell knows who's going to win that one it should be interesting uh Dusko Todorovic taken on Rodriguez both men came in at 186, and both guys look solid. Dusko looked relaxed for a guy coming off a knockout loss. Uh, Rodriguez looked strong, and when they faced off, big size advantage for Rodriguez. I like to see that. Uh, this is another glass cannon match. I took a shot on the dog, Rodriguez, at plus 140. I think these guys are going to slug and throw down, and I think somebody's chin is going to give out on them. If this fight does stretch longer, if it does go to the ground, if it does get sloppy, I kind of like Rodriguez in that area. He's a world-class BJJ player on the floor, so I think that's always in his back pocket and a nice thing for us to keep in mind so we'll see what happens there but taking the risk got the bigger guy he looks yoked up I know a lot of people are saying Buff Obama's fighting on Saturday so that's uh that'll be fun I can't wait to see how that one turns out Ponzinibbio taking on Miguel Baeza Ponzinibbio came in at 170 and a half and he was in excellent shape and I gotta say he was in really good spirits like he came out and he was smiling the whole time he gave a big smile a big flex again does not look like an aging fighter coming off of a knockout loss you got to be a little concerned about that because he's got that quiet confidence in himself there. Miguel Baez came in at 171 and the kid is shredded. You can tell he worked hard for this particular fight. He's absolutely jacked and he gave a bunch of extra flexes. Like he got up on stage and he was feeling himself. He gave a bunch of different poses like a bodybuilder. When they faced off, both guys absolutely confident. Height and reach goes to Miguel Baez, the younger fighter. I'm still looking at Miguel. That's kind of the way that I want to play it, but I also think this fight has a very good shot of not going the distance. Both these guys have had had durability issues both these guys hit like absolute tanks and I think the under is a solid spot that may be the better play since I haven't gone on Miguel Baeza it might just be a better shot to go ahead and take the under instead of picking a side on this one Roman Delize taking on Staropoli. This is one I've had my eyes on. Roman came in at 186, and he looked dialed in, folks. He looked absolutely focused. We've talked about him dropping from 205 to 185, and he looks fantastic at 185, looks strong, no issues making weight, and this was something I kind of expected him to struggle his second time around. I thought maybe we would see those issues pop up, but they did not. Staropoli came in at 185, and he looks thicker than he normally does. Obviously, he usually fights at 170. He's a bit soft, you know. Like I said, he usually fights at 170, so we're used to him being a little more muscled, a little more shredded down a weight class, but he looked pumped up. He's excited. He's ready to go. He's motivated. And then when they faced off, it is a huge, huge size advantage for Roman Dolidze. Uh, I was hoping that Staropoli would transition up to 185 and look a little bit more at home, but it's obvious that Roman is coming down from 205 and Straupoli is coming up from 170. Straupoli looked absolutely intense, though. He's got that fire in his eyes. He's got something to prove. He's got a chip on his shoulder. So I like to see that from Straupoli, but it is concerning the size advantage because I, part of what I was looking at maybe doing was taking Staropoli, and I might still sprinkle him in the third round. That might be the only play that I make on this thing because I'm expecting him to need to be able to get back up and wear out Roman Delize. The problem is if Delize blankets him because he's just so freaking huge, then Staropoli's going nowhere, and I don't know if he'll make Delize work enough to get him to gas out and then be able to get that finish later. He's got to make Delize work. If he doesn't, if he can't get off his back, if he can't move, if he can't make Roman work, then he's going 
going to be stuck underneath Roman for 15 minutes, and Roman may actually find that submission on him because he's not going to have any threat of you know being on the feet with this kid. And on top of that, once they're on the feet, Roman's got like a five-inch reach advantage. So Starpoli's really going to have to get in close, close the distance, make him work, and that'll give another grappling opportunity for Roman. So after seeing the massive size discrepancy, the more... I'm kind of getting off Staropoli. I thought maybe he was a live dog here, and I'm kind of rethinking that here at this point. Walt Harris taking on Marcin Tybura. Walt came in at 264, just one pound shy of the heavyweight limit, and he's rocking the power gut. He looks like he is solid in good shape. I've been watching him work out on Instagram and stuff like that. This guy's locked in. He is ready to go. This is his re-entering of the UFC. He's trying to recreate himself, reinvent himself, reintroduce himself to the UFC fans. And it, honestly, I had somebody message me and say that he looked terrible on the scales. I didn't see it. I thought he looked fantastic. I don't know what... Uh, okay. Full, di full disclosure, I did watch the weigh-ins on my phone as opposed to my usual, you know, laptop with my nice computer screen and, you know, big screen stuff like that. So maybe I missed something. But I didn't see Walt look bad on the scales whatsoever. So I'm not sure what that's about. Marcin Tiboro came in at 251. He's usually a bit of a smaller, lighter type of heavyweight, relies on the movement, that kind of thing. I do think that extra, you know, 13, 14 pounds is absolutely going to favor Walt, and he hits like a truck. So hopefully he puts that to use. Tiboro did look good, though. I will fully admit that. You guys know I'm I'm not a Tybura guy. You know I like to fade Tybura, and he did look good at the scales. I will give him props where it's due. They're the exact same height. When they faced off, they matched up extremely well, except that Walt is a much, much thicker man. You can tell he is just built differently, and I expect him to have a strength advantage. Again, it all just comes down to the cardio. Whether or not Walt can keep this thing going for 15 minutes, whether or not he can defend the takedowns, and whether or not he can finish Tybura potentially early. It was a good face-off. Both guys are intense. Both guys are motivated and ready to go. That's a higher stakes fight than I think a lot of of us are talking about. I can't wait for the co-main event. Go Walt Harris, baby. Let's cash that ticket. Jarzinho Rosenstroik taking on Augusto Sakai in the main event. Rosenstroik came in at 2 54. He gave a good flex. He looks solid. He always does. He always looks in good shape. Another stoic fighter just ready to go to war. Augusto Sakai came in at 255 and a half, and he is flabby, but let me tell you something. We talked about this with Jared Vandera a couple weeks ago. Sakai is transforming. Sakai started off as this big, flabby heavyweight that's carrying a lot of muscle mass around, a whole lot of gut flab and stuff like that. He is slowly turning into a UFC heavyweight. When he flexes, when he puts his arms up, you can see the abs, you can see the muscle definition. The flab is slowly starting to disappear. And I talked about how I felt like Sakai had maybe peaked as a UFC fighter on Monday. I may be mistaken. He looks like he's putting the work in. He's putting the effort in, and his body is reaping the rewards. He is absolutely transforming himself, and we might see better versions of Augusto Sakai over the next couple of fights. I do have Jarzinho Rosenstroik. I do think Jarzinho has a shot to find that chin and maybe just win this thing off significant strikes if he can land hard enough when Sakai engages, but uh, I I'm not at all comfortable on that one. I don't think this is a slam dunk fight for either side. I know a lot of people are on the dog Sakai. I totally understand it. He's got a decent size advantage here in this spot, and he's got an absolute brick for a head. So it's going to be hard for even a guy like Rosenstroik to knock this guy out because his head is so damn huge. And this was an intense face-off. Neither guy wanted to back down. This is going to be a great fight. I can't wait for this main event. I don't think it's going to be as slow-paced as some of the previous ones have been for Rosenstroik, but I do think that uh, it's going to end violently at some point. One of these guys is going to get caught, either a big clinch knee from Augusto Sakai or one of those bombs for Rosenstroik. I think it'll probably end in the third or fourth round. Can't wait for this fight, everybody. There's your undefeated post weigh-in show. And honestly, I don't have any ads that I really want to make at this point. It's more of getting me off of stuff. And you know, when it comes to sports betting, a penny saved is a penny earned, so we really can't call that not worth it for the show. Staropoli is a guy I wanted to take a shot on, but he looks a little undersized. Maybe I sprinkle that round three prop and hope he gets it done, but I'm not really expecting much beyond that. Maybe you take the submission prop for Roman Delizze here instead. That might be a better way of looking because he should just be able to physically overpower Staropoli. Uh, I think uh, Ponzinibbio and Miguel Baeza, again, maybe just play that under instead. I think they're going to go to war with the durability issues. We got a bit of a problem there. Um, Ahoyo, I may not end up taking that dog shot on Ahoyo. I've been looking at it all week. I've been tempted on it all week, but seeing how good Breeze looks and the size advantage not going in the favor of Ahoyo, you got to break Breeze. You got to break him down. You got to make him quit. And I don't know if Ahoyo has the style to do that if he's not the bigger man. If he's the smaller man in the cage, he's not going to be able to physically impose himself. And he, if he 
he's just trying to leg kick from the outside. He's never going to hurt Breeze to the point that he feels like he needs to cover up. So uh, the game plan is kind of out the window on that one. Lipsky looked really good at the weigh-ins. I can't knock her there. Latifi looked really good at the weigh-ins, but I'm also impressed by Bozer coming in heavy. I think that's going to matter. So staying off of that one. Uh, Saliakov and Trinaldo. Trinaldo looked fantastic. I almost took the bet on him before I realized it was at plus. It was at uh, 170 rather th- than being at 155. Now that I've seen him on the scales and how damn good he looks, he may be worth the dog shot. That might be the takeaway from the post weigh-in show is how freaking good Trinaldo looked at 170. Uh, Kirk, I'm again very tempted on. I've been looking at this one all week. I know my guest, uh, Lucrative MMA, came on the show and he was talking about how Makwan Americani is a very safe bet this week. And honestly, I'm leaning dog here. I might go with my fight ready, boys. Dogs are barking this weekend, folks. Dogs are all over this card. A lot of these lines are wide. A lot of these dogs are going to be in these fights and have opportunities. Um, Alon Patrick looked big and looked good. Fjord and Richie, the size advantage for Fjord. I know it's not anything groundbreaking to say the minus 550 favorite is going to win the fight, but that's kind of how I'm feeling here. I mean, the way she's got that size advantage, I think she's going to just tear through this kid. I don't, I, I think Richie's got a good skill set, but she might be on the wrong weight class. And I think she's making her UFC debut on short notice against a bad, bad matchup for her. So lots of opportunities here on this card. There's going to be a lot of us taking big swings and fortunes will be won and lost on Saturday, UFC Vegas 28. Good luck on your degenerate action, everybody. If you've got any questions, hit me up at DieHardMMAPod on Twitter. I will be on Twitter, and uh, I'm going to go get some sun. You have a great weekend. Good luck, and I will chat with you more tomorrow on Fight Day. Let's roll.